When it comes to creating scenes with your art, building illustrations that represent a living, breathing world with characters and environments and backgrounds and everything interacting, I think there's two main elements that you can really dig your teeth into early on. And I want to do a simple drawing lesson covering these concepts to get you up and started quickly when it comes to practicing the art of drawing scenes and larger illustrations. The first of these concepts is the idea of drawing small. This is where you often actually need to plan these large illustrations and think about the ideas of camera angles. How is this shot going to be framed? How do I connect all of these things together? Being able to do that is a huge skill unto itself. And almost what I'd say is drawing small is a skill that you know is actually separate to drawing big. Um, it takes a little bit of practice. The second thing that I think is really, really key here is the concept of the ground plane. This is a fundamental tenet of perspective, and it really just relates to the idea that often the thing that connects all of your characters, backgrounds, objects, etc. together is the ground that they share. And it's often using this tool that we're actually able to create believable worlds and environments. Now, this is obviously a big part of perspective, but I think there's a lot of simple takeaways that you can use to just sort of jump in quickly and start to get your head around this idea of drawing small and drawing an environment where we take into consideration the ground plane. This is the first step that I think will really, really help you to start putting together larger scenes. So let's jump in and get started. Hey there, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. On this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly, creating line and color illustrations in Photoshop from start to finish. This is where we take an idea from the thumbnail to the finished image. You'll also get all of the brushes and PSDs, etc., that I use day to day in my own work. The link will be in the description. Go check it out. Now, there's a couple of traps here that I think people often fall into. The first is sort of trying to create too much too soon, trying to play with the ideas of perspective and camera angles and not really having any way to explore the concept of creating scenes, playing with, again, setting up backgrounds, relating objects to each other. It, it's often tricky to know where to start. And I think often if we sort of get too um, sort of attracted to the idea of creating these amazing scenes with sort of full perspective in the beginning, I think it can be tricky because there's often a lot of actual, actually really important sort of ancillary skills that you need to build first. And this is often just the idea of drilling and getting used to the concept and the experience of placing objects and environments together in a scene. As I said, I think perspective is often one of the things that really trips us up here. And that was certainly the case for me. It's really easy to feel like this is an overwhelming task. And as I said, one of the other things that people often fall afoul of is trying to sort of just create the first image or illustration that comes to mind. Good images are planned, and I think it's really important to build not just your ability to kind of render one of these amazing scenes, but your ability to pick the right one, to find the one that is really the best, that is worth spending time on. And... This really comes down to getting good at doing thumbnail sketches, drawing little versions of your scene, and planning it out. So in this drawing lesson, what I want to do is give you a really, really simple exercise that I've often used, which is where, again, we start drawing scenes and we start placing multiple objects in the scene together. But... We don't focus too much on the idea of crazy composition or creating a finished illustration. 
Instead, we just focus at first on placing them together and getting used to dealing with the drawing challenges that you're going to need to be really good at once you start to add extreme camera angles. So the trick here is we're going to think a little bit more of a zoomed out view. We're just going to draw scenes, but we're not going to try and make them maybe the best composition, but we're going to drill and work on all of the skills that you would actually need to draw those fancy, amazing illustrations. Anyway, let's jump in and we'll jump over to the drawing table and get started. All right, here we are at the drawing table. For this little lesson, I'm going to be using some black wing matte pencils. I have a kneadable eraser and I'm going to be drawing on some Strathmore 400 series smooth surface drawing paper. Now I've got a few notes here um, again just to kind of you know give this some structure for myself and I, and I thought I'd sort of leave them out here and run through what I think are the main points that you can sort of start to try and put together and build when, again, we're just starting to try and practice these fundamental concepts. The first is to really think about what are the fundamental aspects of an image. What are the most important things that are going to be, you know, in, in an 80-20 analysis of, you know, the, the real key things that are going to make a big difference to you being able to create a scene. And um, they mainly are, in my opinion, to think about the ground plane, to think about overlapping sort of shapes um, as, as just a key thing that will always help to give you a sense of depth. And lastly, again, this is where what you want to do is make sure that you have a sense of space within your illustrations. And a good way I like to put that is that you need to tell the story of the space within your illustrations. Again, most of the time we do that by putting one thing right in front of another thing and, and having sort of that sort of dimensionality, right? It's one thing crossing another thing, right? That gives us that sort of immediate sense of sort of depth. So the next thing there is to understand the concept of a one, two, three read, right? So often, um, you know, when you're dealing with illustration, what you're after is a primary read, right? Primary read here is Pinocchio. Why? Because he's a little bit brighter than everything else. That's our sort of primary read. Our secondary read are, you know, some of these characters. And the tertiary read might be, again, you know, some of these details that have really been sort of pushed into the background. This is a cover. It's a really sort of simple example, but that's the basic idea. Your primary read is the thing that your eye goes to straight away. A secondary thing is kind of important, but um, definitely the second tier. Making sure that you just have this as a basic guiding principle will always serve you well. This is not going to necessarily create the most artistic, the most sophisticated illustrations. This is going to give you a good foundation that you can kind of fall back on if, uh, again, you know, you find that your ideas aren't working, etc. Th these are the things that kind of tend to work all the time. I'm not a huge fan of sort of rules or compositional rules or any, any of these kind of things. Um, I, I think, it, again, it's a lot more complicated than that, in my opinion. But uh, these things tend to be the key elements that are always going to work. The next thing that I think you can always use as, especially when you're beginning, a good guiding principle is to understand that you want to kind of have the key to your image, the main thing, the primary read, the you know the biggest element that you want to tell and this could be a story which potentially involves you know something sophisticated right it could be that you have some tension or story that links your primary and secondary read together whatever it is you want to just make sure that that thing is kind of just in the middle of your image right don't bury the lead, just put that thing smack bang in the middle of the image and it'll normally work. It's very easy for people to get sidetracked and just kind of, again, you know, have the main character or the main thing that they're trying to get across in that story and just make it sort of small, right? So again, put it in the middle and make it big, right? So your number one read, um, you know, again, just try put it, you know, smack bang in the middle of your image, make it big. These things are, again, not the keys to the most sophisticated images, but they are things that will tend to always work. The first thing that we're going to talk about here really is the idea of planning an image 
and that again this may not be what you always do or what you end up doing but this is something I've seen a lot of high level artists actually do which is where you sort of actually plan and almost do a floor plan of what your image is like what is your environment how are you planning it out how are you actually understanding in your own mind before you go to draw it what is there if you don't know what it is you can't draw it and it's the same thing with a scene if you don't understand the depth of the scene you're not going to be able to tell the story of that depth within the scene so the first thing we'll talk about is just kind of like how do you practice that and uh, again a lot of this will also talk about that concept i was discussing which is drawing small being able to plan things small that'll also help us with the second thing that i think is really key here which is where we kind of just start drawing out like similar to sort of what i've got here just draw the scene and think about it as if it is from a fairly kind of zoomed out um, camera angle camera lens and just sort of don't draw it with any border just have fun trying to describe a scene trying to describe a sense of space trying to describe a space that has a foreground background middle ground elements that has some overlapping sense has a sense of ground plane and the third thing is where we sort of start to internalize these things that we've been playing with as part of the planning process for an image and start to kind of say, well, what do I have here? If you can kind of just start to piece together a scene initially, and then you can kind of draw it, then the next set thing is like, well, can I make that more interesting, right? C can, I, can I kind of transcend a lot of this real basic, um, you know, fundamental stuff and, and maybe try and make something that's a little bit more special? And that's where the more you practice drawing a specific scene with specific things in it, the more you start to consider how the shapes and the natural lines that might be created by that sort of set of things that you're creating in your image could be manipulated by the camera angle or the lighting or any other number of things to create special, interesting sort of compositional elements, right? Or essentially just to direct the eye flow, direct the eye movement. So again, this is a complicated sort of set of things. It's a little much, um, I'll, I'll try and sort of demonstrate the basic concepts here and we'll see how we go. So for this one, I'll be demonstrating with a couple of, uh, again, things that I'm pretty comfortable with. And the, the reason that I think this is important is that again, you do need to understand what you're drawing. It's very sort of tricky to uh, draw a whole bunch of stuff if you haven't drawn it before and you know that that might seem obvious but I think often one of the biggest issues that people have when they go to kind of draw scenes for the first time is there's just so much stuff that you're not used to drawing or you know maybe you just don't have you know quite the confidence that maybe you need to so again here I'm going to be drawing with this sort of lizard creature that you've seen me use in a few other demos and we'll just have again a little sort of character here somewhere All right and so this idea that i'm sort of describing here where again what i'm doing is is planning and, and thinking about drawing small is a major aspect of how you plan images for, for me anyway i think the idea of sort of thumbnailing being able to draw things small is super super important and drawing things small is its own little challenge it's its own thing that can be a little bit sort of frustrating if you're not used to it because you almost need to learn how to draw everything again so, you know, you, you might be, you know, used to drawing people, you might be used to drawing one thing, you might be used to drawing, again, rocks or, you know, a, a tree. But what we have to do here is get good at, you know, drawing trees that are small and understanding, you know, the, the size of your, of your paper and, you know, all of the things that are going to play into this you know, little world, right? Like how how is this little world going to be differently affected than the large detailed world? And and how do you kind of efficiently go and, you know, add some 
little little drawings to your repertoire. Now, the reason I say this is, um, oh, got that out of shot. The, the, the reason I say this is because it, it can be very frustrating when you're trying to draw thumbnails or trying to plan. And again, you kind of run out of room, right? It's, it's very easy to, you know, be playing around with these things. And, you know, you can certainly understand why they're, you know, important. But, you know, actually doing it is different. So, you know, just practice drawing small and practice drawing things that you know small and it, it's almost like we're you're building your own little sort of version of the world these little worlds can be very very useful to quickly iterate because often one of the things with a a scene and, and i said like one of the real traps people can fall into is that if if you're not used to spending a long amount of time on a big scene it can be very disheartening. You know, you can get halfway through it and, you know, you can find that, you know, that's that's very frustrating. And, uh, you know, if it's not sort of going well. And, and I think often one of the reasons that these things don't go well is because uh, the actual composition, the plan for it wasn't, you know, sort of good enough. So the more you can kind of sit there and plan with small drawings, I think the, the the more likely you are to to have fun when you actually sort of add detail, and and I found this certainly has helped me a lot to you know sort of plan images and and do all that sort of thing. So again, the idea there is let's sort of draw small, and the first thing that I think will sort of really help is again just to sort of get used to drawing with very sort of low distortion grids. Right here, I've got. Right, basically I'm just kind of looking down at, you can imagine these are like little figurines. Imagine them as like little Warhammer figurines or um, sort of military figurines and they're on one of those sort of tables, right? People are playing some form of sort of strategy, Dungeons and Dragons, etc. And they're not actual Dungeons and Dragons, I don't play that way, but again, people play all sorts of games like this, right? It's it's like a real-time strategy game, etc. Um... And the, the, the point here is that, again, you can adjust this, you can twist this, but we're going to learn a lot of things here just by playing at this scale that will really help us. And you don't necessarily need to, you know, zoom in or, or you know, like get crazy or fancy with it. You can, you can start here and, you know, spend a lot of time here. So, again, it could be more top-down, it could be, uh, you know, like sort of closer to the ground, whatever. The point is low distortion, focus on thinking about and planning the image in your mind. What shapes tend to evolve here? What shapes tend to work? And the other thing that you'll sort of find is that, again, it, it is often just this sort of mix of different elements within the scene that will start to create a feeling of an environment, right? So as it becomes very sort of static, sorry, as it begins, it, it's quite static, right? You know, we just got some pretty boring one or two objects. But, you know, of, often it's just a matter of sort of adding all the things. And this is, this is one of those, the most basic concepts, but I think it is so important, is that when, when you're drawing a scene, you need to know what you're doing and you'll be able to really see here what's missing because it's so basic. So, you know, okay, maybe they're kind of walking down a road, right? Maybe they're sort of traveling, right? Got this character and this character and they're kind of traveling down here. Again, what does a road look like? You know, like what, what, what ties it a path? Is it one of those sort of old Roman roads, right? With like a thing. Right, sort of ditch it at either side, um, you know, for water, it, it does it have a curve on it? What is going on? And, you know, how does that affect all these other things? If you just kind of imagine it as being a world lacking all those extra little details, when, when you actually sort of come to, to draw it from, from a slightly sort of more sophisticated angle, right? So say we, you know, try and draw that from a, right, from a different angle. Right, see so horizon lines down here. Boom. Right, characters here, and I'll just do this sort of super simple. Right, but say we, you know, say we do kind of draw this. 
from an angle that's a bit more right low down right we got a big sort of sorry it's a little bit rough but I think you get the idea right see they're sort of walking along again what what you need to know is uh, you know because again here it may not seem that important but it is right we need all these rocks here we need a sense of sort of where they're going and um, you know it, it's all these little bits and pieces that will kind of inform us and sort of tell us right if we have a more complicated angle that you know this is a real breathing living world and yeah, I often find it's these little bits and pieces which are so, so important. And again, what we're going to do is sort of think about, well, what would be there? What can I use to, again, show overlap and, um, you know, help me with the story of depth here, right? So again, you might have the tree there, right, in the background, um, and then you might kind of say, well, oh, you know, like, where, where do I want it? Where, where do we place it for sort of best, you know, sort of composition, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's sort of better over here, right? Who knows? Again, you, you get to sort of play with these things, but you've given yourself the first most important thing, which is sort of what is there? What is happening? And I think you'd be surprised the degree to which often drawings are just not even getting off the ground because we don't have a really good sense of what's happening and what would be there and what do we need to draw. Because often there's two elements to this. The first thing is, well, what should be there? And the second thing is, well, how do we draw that? And then the, I guess the third thing is similar to what I was saying before. How do we draw that and make it look good? And uh, again, what often happens is people get to this phase where we're trying to make a little scene or something, but we kind of just hit a blank, right? We don't have little props. We don't have little things to put in there. So just think about it like this in the beginning. Now, if this is challenging, then think also just about planning it out without, you know, any perspective or anything like that. I've seen a lot of really, really talented artists do this as well, which is where, again, you don't have to do it in a border, but, you know, you, you might kind of say, you know, hey, yep, so, you know, I've sort of got a, right, we've sort of got like a, a path going here and we've got some characters, right, going along the path and, you know, what's where, you know, maybe again, there's like a bunch of sort of trees over here right again it might be that it's one of those sort of roman roads right that sort of has a little ditch at the side yeah in which case again we've got a ditch kind of either side right maybe there is a maybe there is a gap right again that's another one of those things with a lot of those sort of roads you know you'd have a gap so that there would be some space either side so no one gets sort of ambushed Right, so I've got a road going up here. And then the other thing you could sort of say is like, well, you know, does it curve, right? Is Would that be interesting? If Does, does it curve? And in that case, again, sort of what, what happens, right? So this is not necessarily something that's going to 100% help you to, um, you know, draw a better image. But if you're sort of struggling, then just planning things out at the most basic level will really, really help. And especially if you're dealing with, you know, some more interesting, you know, you're trying to make the environment more interesting. What, what you can often say is like, you know, there's not much here. This, this is pretty boring, right? Like what, what kind of shapes are going to be, are going to be interesting here? Like, like how do we make this, how do we sort of tell an, an interesting story here? And um, again, that's where either you can choose to try and make this more interesting or you can choose to, you know, sort of just say, hey, th these are the shapes I've got, right? It's my job to kind of make them make them really interesting and, and think about it. But a, a lot of what you could do here is, is, again, just sort of understand, you know, where there might be big rocks on the side, right? Maybe there's some sort of big rocks out, right? So this is our sort of road. Bump. 
and you know maybe they get smaller as they go in. It's these sort of patterns that you find that will really kind of help to just make it feel a little bit more constructed, a little bit more sensible. And again, you know, think about what what's going to be in the background. Is it uh, again? Is it sort of more? Ro is it rolling hills? Um, you know, is it a big mountain? Is it something we can see in the background? What's important? Again, what's the primary read in my illustration? So, again, get used to drawing small. Get used to planning these things small. Get used to drawing little characters, right? So find a you know a sort of a size that is is comfortable to you, and just get used to that. Again, you know, a lot of it will depend how big your pencil is, but yeah, just have fun play around and you know th there's something fun about doing this because certainly I think you you'll probably find you know that just drawing these things is you know it is a little bit challenging right like drawing small you know managing all of these things is is somewhat challenging but once you sort of get good at it again you get a lot of freedom you can really play around with little environments and little scenes and I think this often brings back that kind of you know what's fun about drawing is scenarios. The other thing I'd say about this is that once you kind of start planning this what I often do is I kind of realize well there's nothing really happening here so let's make a story right let's make it so that you know this character is kind of walking along right and again you know they've got their All right, we got our little dragon guy here. Bump. Right, bump, bump. Right. What's happening? What could be interesting? Well, maybe. Right, maybe they're meeting someone. Right, maybe. Maybe there is something going on. Right, maybe there is someone on the road up here. Right, maybe they're meeting some people, sort of ambushing them. Right, so have some sort of big, right, sort of hooded characters. Maybe a few little, right, sort of other characters. Um, again, maybe they're kind of again, maybe there is this sort of ditch. Right, maybe you could kind of say, well, maybe there's like a rock here or something that's kind of hiding what was going on. Right, like what is the story? What is the narrative? Right, and maybe there's like a whole bunch of little well, sort of again it's a fantasy land they could be sort of little goblin characters right sort of waiting up here some giant big character as well again no idea just like fun stuff I, i'm often you know i find often works so you, you can see that again it, it, just thinking about this way and but but not necessarily thinking like oh you know here's my thumbnail not getting stuck into the idea of what's there, right? What what's going on? But uh, you know, starting to just experiment and and feel out space and and get a feeling for it. And you can see that you know this is this is you know taking me way off mark. You know now I've got this giant thing here, right? Um, but that's that's the point is that if we think about narrative and what's interesting and, and how do we sort of frame it and, and what's going on. If we do that first, you sort of start to play with these concepts. Like what is interesting? Um, how am I going to you know create a story? How am I going to create an interesting composition? What elements do I have here? Once we kind of do that, then it becomes a lot easier to create um, you know a much more interesting illustration because then you know the things are there and you've kind of got a little track of you know how that kind of works in your mind and it's in my experience a little bit easier to then go and sort of change the camera angle here and and, and really think about um, how do I make this sort of dramatic what I would say is again like a lot of what you see me do in my art is that again a lot of the stuff I do has quite a zoomed out camera angle anyway because I often find if you introduce some sort of interesting narrative element there and you just kind of tell the story, then often, you know, that creates a lot of visual interest. But again, other things you could start to do here is 
iterate on that idea and, and, and sort of say, okay, well, what would be more interesting? Well, again, you know, the idea of a, of a bridge, right, is like a, a classic sort of compositional um, fantasy thing, right? It often frames a lot of uh, fantasy ideas, you know, like battles on bridges. Um, again, there's often like a lot of sort of story, right? So you could sort of maybe say, um, you know, again, maybe there's maybe there's like a bridge here, right? Um, and, you know, maybe there's like a river going through there. Um, again, I don't know why that... Uh, maybe there's like some more rocks, right? Sort of interfering with the river there. Maybe the river has to sort of go over here. Boom. Right, and they're kind of ambushing. So again, those ideas, right? See if you can make it more interesting. See if you can add stuff, right? And and, and that gives you lots of context for, you know, now I've got more things that are likely to, to overlap, right? I've got more things that I can sort of play with. And I, I'm i doing scenes, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about scenes, but, but I'm not dealing with perspective. You will have to play with this and get good at drawing small because that that is its own challenge but again i i think the more you can do that the better and from my experience again learning to draw small with you know not a lot of um perspective uh you know still applies it's, it's still easy to then go and, and take those concepts and use them when we do add perspective so anyway that's the first part that i think is is a really important skill building exercise to do is plan the drawings think about the drawings create scenarios try and manifest some sort of basic interest that you know is sort of separate from the actual composition because um, that'll give you a really good place to start and also just contemplating how you draw scenes from a very sort of zoomed out perspective starts to make you consider what is actually there and then you can go check some reference right check some reference of some fantasy roads check some reference of some bridges and you can start to then play around with drawing them right again you know think about okay i got to draw a bridge how is that bridge constructed right how is that bridge made right is it is it made of stones um right does does it have right is it is it a sharp drop right is it like this uh again is it a right is it just a is it a river is it a ravine does it have sides right is it made of wood is it made of stone what happens at the end of it right how how if it if it has um sides right what are they uh, right it does does it does it have a does it have an arch to it? How, how does it? How do bridges work? If you're trying to draw scenes and environments, then, again, it, it's these little details and conceptual things that happen within your mind that need to happen anyway. And it's much better for you to build a habit of drawing them like this and thinking about them and planning them out and building your own little fantasy worlds and building your own concept of how to create a living, breathing world. Um, when you're doing it like this, I can, you know, draw this bridge here and, and I can quickly get a feel for like, do I have enough elements here? Is there anything I'm missing? Right. Like go look at some reference. What, how do you handle the transition on a little um, lake bed or, or, or river, right? Where it goes from here, right? That's going to be grass. And at some point it's maybe going to stop being grass, right? It's going to be sort of rocks or um, dirt, right? Eroded sort of stuff. And then what is the transition here, right? How... It, how how does that work? How how big is the actual stream? It's all of these little concepts that will help you. How do we sort of transition this bridge that might be man-made into just sort of, you know, the environment, right? How does that happen? It's often these transition points, right? What happens here? That is often where the magic comes when you're sort of drawing and and, and creating these fantasy things. And if you just know it's there, I, I, I think it, it allows you to much better, as I keep saying, think about the drawing problem, right? Think about how you structurally create that. And uh, again, it all starts, in my opinion, with sort of being able to draw small. All right. So the next thing that I think is worth talking about is just getting used to actually taking some ideas that you've got and drawing without a border. Now, thinking about composition 
and sort of drawing the border first, I think, you know, poses a lot of challenges. That in itself is something where you have to practice. What do I put in first? How do I, how do I think of this? Something that I used a lot early on was just sort of drawing these things first and then putting a border on. And uh, especially if you're doing this on your iPad or digitally or something like that, um, you know, you can very easily kind of draw a big sort of bunch of things and um, and then just kind of like move a little crop circle around. Or if you're doing this, uh, you know, traditionally, again, you know, get, get, get a bit of paper, right? Cut a little thing out and then kind of like move it around. Or um, one of the things you can do, we'll play with that later, is just get a few bits of paper, right? And sort of start cropping it off. When you find one that works, right? Draw a box around it. Again, we'll get to that in a sec. But this is where, again, just experiment and play around with drawing some scenes without borders and learn to draw small in this way as well. So I'm going to take a, a couple of sort of basic compositional ideas, uh, props that, uh, again, might be sort of good to demonstrate with this. I'm going to use the same two characters. Um, so again, I've got my sort of, oh, that's out of, sorry, out of frame, right? So I've got my little character. Um, Right, we've got the right the the lizard lizard cat. Right, again, character is looking pretty small there. Boom. And I'm just going to use some giant boulder rocks. Right, giant boulder rocks, and that's it. And this is where what the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to build a, n not even a visual library, but literally a set of props that you know how to draw. So as you're sort of experimenting with the concept of how do I create scenes, what we want to do is control our variables. You want to remove all of the sort of variables that might trip you up. So everything that uh, you know could go wrong <laughs> that you can control get it out of there so pick characters and objects that are going to be in your scene that you already know well how to draw and if you don't then again pick a few that you really would like to learn how to draw and then learn how to draw them first or at least understand that again the first few sketches you do might be a little bit of a challenge but um this is where you know, I'll just often do this as little, you know, exercises, as as, as things to 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 sort of lower the burden on my own sort of um, drawing. You know, again, especially if I'm just trying to play around and sort of sketch around. But again, you know, I, I've often I've drawn like a, a similar kind of scene to this before, and so again, just demonstrate this basic idea. Um, I'm going to play around with uh, different. Uh, with these same characters in in a little environment where maybe they're sitting down to you know to, to be in a campfire right so again how do you do that well you know, let's sort of put a, a campfire in the middle right we sort of got a campfire or something there again how do you draw a campfire when it's small uh, we'll deal with that later and you know then I'm gonna sort of put the, the character here again just drawing small but using all of the same Right, same Loomis construction bits and pieces that I'm often talking about. All right, let's put them on a log. All right, so again, I need to add log to this. All right, again, why there's a log in a boulder field, I don't know, but right, that's that's plenty. And the next thing I'm going to add is this creature. And again, I've sort of done this same composition before, which I sort of found worked. It's kind of curled up around him. All right, so again, we've got the head will be here. Boom. Now, if you're doing this sort of thing for the first time, again, you know, the, the first few passes at an idea might not work, uh, might not work that well. Um, you know, that's totally fine. Just keep experimenting. Again, understand that you're, you're, you're solving hard problems when you're trying this and every time you kind of fail, your, your subconscious mind is kind of learning something and it's just a matter of sort of iteration. Um, that in my experience is, you know, legitimately how it kind of works. All right. So again, I'm not sure, quite sure how this, uh, 
right? How this character lies down. That could be some viz dev stuff we need to do, right? Does it still have the arch <laughs> when it lies down? Uh, don't know. Or maybe it kind of, again, chills out a little bit. And, you know, wh one of the reasons I'm often using little stick figure things so often is they're the most efficient way to plan out these sort of small drawings right and the thing that connects a small drawing to a big drawing is again just the, the skeleton stick figure so you know that there, there are reasons why you know i'm often sort of using that um and then here we can again have that tail right doing something like this all right and you know, then you can sort of keep building on concepts here, right? To to make it interesting. And this is how I would sort of approach it, though: is think about what is the primary read, right? What is the most important thing in the image? And that would be the main character for me. And it's sort of this interaction, right? It's the main character lit by a fire, right? And the sort of head of this character, and they're all kind of bam, you know, they're pretty close, right? Just let's make them pretty prominent in the image. They, they can easily be sort of brighter there. Now, the next thing is to build around them the story of where they are. Tell the story of the environment. Tell the story of what's happening. So, you know, one of the things I, I like to do again is just think about, well, if I was this character, what would I have done to get to this point, right? So you imagine they're, again, they're sort of journeying along, they sort of stop for the night. You would take off the, the saddle, right? Because that's just one of those things you normally do um, with sort of horses and, and those sort of things. Uh, you got to sort of, you know, you can't leave that on. You've got to give the animal a rest. And so, you know, then we could kind of say, well, yeah, over here, maybe let's, uh, you know, let's put that saddle right on a rock. Just imagine like they've they've kind of you know, put it over there and, you know, maybe we can have the, the saddle blanket down here. Boom. All right. Maybe a few other blankets over there. Um, and then over here, maybe we'd have a packet of food. All right. So we got some food here. Things that are being cooked with. All right. Maybe there's, again, like a pan on the, on the fire. So, you know, I, I'm just adding stuff, right? And, uh, you know, I, I'm not really thinking about is this the optimal compositional angle for all of these things. But one of the key things that I am doing is, is considering the idea of overlap. So having a ground plane, right, where, again, we can kind of see if we plot that out. Boom, 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 right? I've got my sort of gritty ground plane in there. This is happening in my head. What I want is, again, the idea that there's things are kind of in front of things or in front of things. They don't necessarily have to be, right, from a compositional standpoint, right? One thing is in front of another thing is in front of another thing. That's sort of what you want when you're sort of drawing in the three-dimensional sort of scene here. But the idea that there are sort of things in front of other things, that there is a scene with lots of stuff in, will really sort of get you to think about how you can compose interesting shots if you do want a more interesting angle where you can obviously have things in the foreground, right? And uh, again, that's where sort of planning this and thinking about this gives you some ideas. Whereas if you sort of just go to do the same shot again from a you know more dramatic angle right here, you might have right fire, Right, character. Got the sort of dragon's head here, so horizon line is kind of here. Um, you know, what do I put in the foreground? Well, now I've sort of got an idea. Maybe I could put, like, you know, again that sort of rock in the foreground with the with the saddle and put a few things there. Right? It 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 gives us it gives us a few ideas, and and again, it's that thought process that I swear often it is the thing that's missing is just having compositions and not really knowing what to put in there and so it kind of feels bare or you are just kind of making it up as you go and then the perspective doesn't work right we want to control variables so again you can see here I've, I've sort of plotted in most of the basic little ideas 
The next thing is, okay, they're, they're sort of sitting in this sense of right boulders or rocks. And this is where what I'm playing with is that sense of overlap again. And I'm getting a feel for the ground plane, right? That there is a ground plane, right? And again, we're going to have some other rocks sort of overlapping, right? And again, there might be some, you know, wouldn't necessarily have to be sort of boulders everywhere. Or maybe there is a boulder here, but I'm not going to see it, right? I, don't, I mean, there might be one, you know, in the foreground here. I'm not going to sort of put that in, but, you know, you certainly could, you know, if you wanted to kind of put that in right think about well and now we start to think about well maybe it would be cool if like you kind of see this character right if you see them between some rocks right so maybe it's like this you know maybe there's like a ground plane here and you've got some foreground right and then you sort of see the repeated shapes which is a great compositional sort of thing right and maybe, yeah, you just kind of see these characters way over there in the distance, right? And they've got these kind of, right, sort of boulders going there. And uh, again, it would probably be sort of dark. So again, you know, it starts to give you ideas like, oh, maybe that would be good, right? And so th the thing here is, again, I've sort of got a plan here. I can start thinking in terms of camera angle, right? I can start thinking in terms of that, which is sort of that third point that I was sort of considering here, is that once you kind of draw the zoomed out version, then it's a lot more easy to either just say, hey, you know what, let's just make a cool composition. It, it's like a fun sort of um, scene, you know, and we're just sort of telling the story there. But we can also start to iterate on those ideas and say, well, what would be a good shot of this that would have nice composition? But yeah, before that, before we sort of dive too much into that sort of third concept, again, let's just sort of keep putting some of these here. And again, I'm playing with this idea that there's overlap. Do I need to go all the way out here? No, but you know, this sort of gives me a, a sense of like, well, what would that be like? What would that feel like? And again, you can start to maybe try and illustrate a bit of what that feels like here, um, you know, and start to create, you know, like what sort of, what sort of idea do you want there? Boom. Anyway, that is the fundamental second step here that I think you can play around with is just draw little, you know, almost like a diorama. Again, imagine it as a uh, you know, you're playing some sort of top-down fantasy game or top-down, um, you know, science fiction game, right? And you're just kind of seeing the characters there. We're not seeing heaps of drama. But we're planning and we're thinking about overlapping shapes and creating interest. And you can see that even though this is a very boring camera angle, because I have overlap, right? I've got, um, you can see the overlap on the ground plane, right? And I can create by putting, placing some sort of more rocks behind and, in front of some of these elements, right? I can start to connect up the ground plane. I, I can think very sort of carefully about, you know, what is there and, you know, how we can sort of sell that depth. Maybe a few bits of weeds or something like that. Um, because I've got that depth there, it's interesting because I've still got overlapping shapes. And I think that's one of the most important takeaways here with a lot of these things is if you create environments that sort of follow those sort of basic ideas, right? I can sense the ground plane. I have overlap. I have a sense of space. I have a one, two, three read, right? I'm going to put it in the middle, right? It, it's, it, it's not a great image, but I think what you'll find is the more you start to put those things into practice and get used to them, the more you see that those fundamental elements of composition and sort of scene will begin to, you, you, you know, you, you're building that muscle, right? And uh, again, you know, you can you play around with these things and create this depth without worrying too much about, again, doing any fancy drawing, right? And again, another big lesson here is that often 
you know, what makes complex scenes is just doing the same thing again and again, right? I'm just overlapping the shapes, right? I'm overlapping the shapes. We've got repeating shapes, overlapping shapes. Those are fundamental compositional elements that will kind of always work. And uh, again, you can try and, you know, make your life hard by doing them with really complicated drawing. Or again, you can try and make it a little bit simpler. All right. So again, that third thing that I was talking about, which you know, and I, I can do some extra videos on that. Let me know in the comments below if, if you'd like some extra sort of explanation on these. We, we could go a lot deeper, do, you know, some sort of explanations and, and more sort of iterations and, and versions of uh, the same thing so you can see the same concept again and again. But uh, again, the, the third thing here that I think really sort of connects this up is we need to iterate, right? And, and you know, you don't have to stop here. This doesn't have to be the finished image. It's planning, it's, it's, it's trying to feel the space. Um, and what you can think about then is as I was doing here, okay, I've sort of got these elements. You, you can start to feel them in your mind. You can start to see the shapes. You can start to understand how they might work. What works about this? What doesn't? right? We've got great repeating shapes here because I'm using a very simple plan, <laughs> right? Um, and what you'll find is that plan will work if you're doing it big or in three dimensions or small, right? It doesn't matter. Again, we have our sort of fire up here. So this would be a, yeah, like sort of weird illustration to put, right? These, these characters like all the way in the background, but again, that might sell the shot. That might be what the story is. Um, so again, you know, the other thing that I, you know, you might find really works is just thinking about abstract concepts like this arc of the character, this arc of the, the cat lizard thing, right? So again, as I was kind of doing here, what, what you might think of is like, well, let's just play around with and see if I can get like a really nice flow, right? Like you can see conceptually that right, I can sort of have this flow, right, and I, and then you kind of have some, again, sort of overlapping, overlapping forms, right, so if I sort of start to, again, we can, you know, turn it around, we do it from a slightly different angle if we want, they don't have to be there, but this gives us the idea, right, so I can kind of see that, all right, maybe, right, I've got this kind of flow, right, and I know I've got these kind of overlapping shapes, Um, again, and just play around, like, how does that work? Can, can I start to think about my sort of abstract composition a little bit more? Um, again, here we could, you know, we could potentially put, you know, some of that stuff in, in the foreground, right? Put that thing there. Again, I don't know how that would sort of upset the composition, but just talking about ideas. Right, I kind of like it being simple. But here again, we've got fire, character, bump, sitting by the fire. And right now I've, you know, I've sort of got this. Maybe I could put a, a bit more kind of stuff here. Some more things in the foreground. Again, showing depth. Again, not really sure what they are, but starting to consider, you know, what what's inherent in this composition, right? What's what's interesting and inherently dynamic about it? And again, you know, the thing that I kind of saw and I liked was this flow, right? This kind of idea of oh, I'm I'm sen sensing this flow. Like, can I place that within the frame? Thinking about you know the the camera angle. Right, in this case again, sitting on the log, right, got some extra bits and pieces here. Right, got, uh, that would be sort of, right, the leg is there. Right, and again, you know, might be able to show some more of that sort of repeating, repeating shapes in the background. Again, that, a lot of this would probably be dark, right. Um, but I think that the fundamental change from like what I'd be doing now and, and the advantages I, I, I sort of have now thinking about this are that 
you know, now I've got stuff to do. Now I've got jobs to try. Now I've got iterations that I can play with, right? Now I've got things that might work or might not work. I can keep playing with this idea, right? I can, you know, I, I can start pushing it. I can start working with it. I can see, you know, like maybe let's try something different again. Let, maybe let's try that. Maybe let's try it further away. Let's see if we can, you know, how could we sort of position the camera and the creature and all of those things so that again we we kind of maybe change the the angle of this right and get a much sort of more interesting sort of flow here um again th this is how again i i'm often trying to balance and play with the ideas of narrative composition and um sort of pictorial abstract composition again they're two separate things that's probably a video i need to um you know make <laughs> at some point but again there's there's narrative composition where we often have a story uh, as i was showing you with the again those sort of you know really sort of simple um, above the head shots if you have an interesting story then often you don't need really really complicated abstract ideas to create interest uh, if you have both then that's sort of ideal as long as again your abstraction isn't overpowering the story but if we kind of begin, if we take the load off and say, well, I know what's happening. I have a general idea of what's happening with the scene. I can, of course, move it around, right? The lizard guy can be facing this way, can be facing that way, can have more of an arch, less of an arch, right? Um, the character could be, you know, in here, could be over there. They could be standing up. I have, a, I have a multitude of different options that I can try at this point. And because I'm kind of anchored around this idea, it becomes more a matter of like, how do I express that concept than, um, you know, is this a good little thumbnail or not? Well, I don't know, but, uh, you, you know, there's something here and, and you've got a plan. So let's keep iterating. Let's keep working. Let's keep thinking about how this idea could be made better. And I think that takes a little bit of the pressure off because it's giving you a formal process. It also means when you come back, you could try a few more because you've got the general idea here. And uh, again, you know, if you're finding like it's just not working again, try and think of a more interesting idea. Again, two characters talking. Maybe there's some tension. Maybe there's some, maybe they're arguing. Maybe you could, uh, again, zoom in on that, make that the primary read. Uh, worry less about abstract composition. Maybe you have, you know, an even simpler idea for an image, right? Maybe it's just the idea of, and this is where, again, I'd say that the more you want to practice abstract composition, the more you should just think about creating very simple images, right? So in this case, right, you might have just character, right, plus boulders, right? And it's just a matter of sort of showing that depth, right? Thinking about the composition. Right, thinking about maybe uh, again, like, is there an interesting lighting scenario? And uh, this would be a much easier way to think about, uh, you know, leading lines, rule of thirds. Where do you put your character? What happens, etc. So it's it's more a matter of saying, look, I've got one object, right? Another object, right? Uh, another object, and the trick is not to kind of focus on like oh how do I make the most amazing image it's like well how do you arrange these things in a visually pleasing way how do I use overlap how do I tell a story with this right and the story could just be big medium small right it could be something very simple like that it could be um, you know light versus dark right it could be round versus uh, you know square and you can use those sort of basic concepts to get creative. Again, creativity responds well to restriction. And I think that's where I feel like there's a lot of benefit to thinking about it in this manner. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. For this one, I'll just run through the basic sort of uh, takeaways that I think you can sort of go and, and, and actually kind of practice right now. The first is just think about planning images, right? Think about drawing maps. Um, you know, if you want to 
you know, draw cars or boats or, th or those sort of things, think about like, can you just draw it from the front? Do you understand the proportions? Do you understand, you know, what's happening? How big are things? You know, you, this could easily be, um, and again, I'll, I'll do some of these that aren't fantasy. I feel like everything I do is fantasy because it's easier for me to explain it because that's where most of my visual library is. But uh, again, you know, I'd do exactly the same thing if it was like, um, you know, uh, a character in their sort of mech robot, you know, is traversing some post-apocalyptic scene or, you know, you have uh, some cyberpunk-esque, you know, character and their sort of cool car and the background is just, uh, you know, some sort of sleazy nightclub uh, sort of, you know, opening or something like that. Whatever it is, exactly the same thing. Figure out how to draw it. Draw it small. Plan out where things go. Try and draw it. Um, you know, uh, separated from any sense of, uh, you know, sort of perspective or trying to make it sort of look cool. The second thing is, again, often when you're trying to plan these things, just draw them zoomed out without a border. It makes it a lot easier to just think about the space and experiment and, and have fun. And lastly, as I was just talking about, uh, you know, then think about how to iterate and then think about how to take those concepts that you already are starting to understand a little bit and build in those abstract compositional elements that you often see talked about in composition books. And the last thing is just keep it basic, right? We want a sense of space, overlap, ground plane, one, two, three, read. Just keep it in the middle, keep it big, right? Keep the important things big in the middle. Um, you'll find, you know, if you're lost, those will often be the things that will make your life easy and make it all work. Anyway, that's all I've got time for on this one. Uh, let me know if you've got any comments or questions. Uh, again, be more than happy to do more stuff on this and I will do more stuff on this in the future. So let me know. Um, that'll help me build out the next video. But uh, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.